the most important emotional detox you need to take. Do an audit of all your beliefs and take ownership of them. Human lives are made up of beliefs. Our beliefs are not just these mental clouds that float through our minds with no effect. They're not just conversational notions that we talk about from time to time with absolutely no impact on our daily waking lives. No, our beliefs define our lives. They are the cement that holds our lives together. Everything about you, from the way you wear your hair, your choice of clothing, the way you talk, even the condition of your skin are all products of what you choose to believe about yourself deep down inside. If you believe that you're a certain type of person, then this means that you believe that you are capable of certain things and not others. Don't think that these beliefs just stay in your head. They have an impact on what you choose to think about, how you interpret reality, the things you choose to perceive or even remember, and what you feel about your interpretations of reality. In other words, they have a real impact on how you process reality. This manifests in the things that you say, the things you feel, and the things that you do. In other words, they impact your choices. List these beliefs out. Please understand that it doesn't matter whether they're good or bad. This is no time to be judging them. Just list down all your beliefs. Do a mental purge. Write down the first thing that comes to mind and keep writing until you run out of ideas. Take your time. Work from where you are. It's very easy to say that you should let go of limiting beliefs. It's very easy to view your life as a simple menu with certain disagreeable items on it. It is tempting to think that to improve your life, you just need to cut out the disagreeable items and you can move on. It doesn't work that way, sadly enough. Whatever garbage, poison, or cancer you think your life may have is simply a matter of interpretation. As the old saying goes, one man's garbage is another man's treasure. It all depends on your point of view. That traumatic experience that you think robbed you of your childhood might actually be the cathartic experience somebody else needs to become a winner in life. Two completely different people who undergo the same traumatic experience often come out in two totally different ways. Understand that your interpretation of your reality is encapsulated in your belief. It's only as negative as your willingness to view it that way. You interpret your experiences as negative, and guess what happens next? That's right. These experiences have a negative effect on how you feel and think about things. Ultimately, they have an effect on how you do things. There is a better way. Instead of simply just cutting all these things out and letting go, there is a better approach. Let's get real here. It's almost impossible to cut out your past. It's not as if you can take some sort of amnesia capsule. It doesn't work that way. You will always have your past. Those experiences happened. These are facts. They're not going to go away anytime soon. The better approach would be to rearrange your mental furniture. Step number one, reinterpret your beliefs. Beliefs don't come out of nowhere. There are certain facts in your background or in your life and certain experiences that support those beliefs. It's as if they give oxygen to those beliefs and these facts maintain your beliefs. Indeed, these facts even make them grow. What if you can take whatever sustains your beliefs and interpret those facts differently? Instead of your belief grinding you down and making you feel like garbage, reinterpret these facts so they empower you and make you feel that life is possible once again. Choose to look at these facts from totally different perspectives and choose to believe that you don't have to live your life living in some sort of tightly defined, neat little box. Step number two, detoxify your belief interpretation system. Please remember that beliefs don't come out of nowhere. They are being sustained by external experiences. These are called facts. To pretend otherwise is to basically set yourself up for a massive letdown. Whatever progress you achieve would be short-lived. Sooner or later, your old habitual patterns will come back and you end up where you started. That's a dead end. Don't even try. For this detox step to work, you have to detoxify the way you interpret your personal reality. Ask yourself, is this the only way to interpret these facts? Is this the only reading? Or is there something more neutral or better yet, something more positive? Follow these steps to detoxify your mindset. Ask yourself the following questions. What am I really perceiving? When you ask yourself this question, you force yourself to be more objective. This means that you look at things both at face value and also in terms of alternatives. Next, ask yourself, what do I normally assume about the things that I experience? When you do this, you're basically asking yourself, is there any other way to interpret the things that I am perceiving aside from my habitual interpretations or responses? You're giving yourself an out. You're giving yourself an alternative. Look for a neutral interpretation or, if you can do it, a positive read on the objective stimuli that you are observing from the real world. Identify an empowering interpretation and repeat it at every opportunity. Practice makes perfect. 
It's very hard for many people to adopt a new habit precisely because they feel they don't have time. The way you think about the world and your place in it form a big part of your mental habits. A key part of mental detox is to let go of this through the repetition of a more empowering interpretation. The moment an image of your abusive father comes to mind, you can always try to override it by saying, well, my father was working when he came home. He was dead tired. He didn't have time to screw around with kids who did not appreciate him. Try to put yourself in the shoes of your mother who you felt throughout all this time was domineering and controlling. Is there any other possible explanation why she behaved the way she did? Put yourself in the shoes of your ex-girlfriend who stabbed you in the back by sleeping with your best friend. Is there a possible justification for that? I know that none of this is easy because a lot of this involves facts that you may have been trying to run away from for so long. But until and unless you confront them and, most importantly, look at alternative readings based out of compassion or empathy, nothing's going to change. Your old mental interpretation of these triggers will keep feeding into your mental habits. Repeat it until it sets in. Repeat your new interpretation until it sets in. Keep repeating it until it becomes habitual. How do you know it's habitual? When it becomes your automatic response. That mental image flashes. For example, your father leaving your family, and then a new interpretation comes in. When you can see daylight between how you reacted in the past, which is anger, resentment, and self-blame, to something more positive, then you're not trying hard enough. Keep repeating it until you see that distinction. This kind of thing is not going to happen overnight. But the good news is that it does assume some form of momentum. Eventually, you start displacing your old mindset. For more free educational content, visit learnforfree.biz. Content produced and distributed by AllSuperInfo.